so, you know, that's a tough job, people. That really is. That's a tough job running a conference if the hotel's right next door to you. And it's even tougher doing that. So, uh, my hat's off to him for that. Um, you know, we're the largest space society uh, for space advocacy. Right here. You're it. We're it. We've got uh, over 15,000, almost 20,000 members around the world, mostly in the United States. And, uh, and we've not been known for being the loudest space society. We've not been known for being heard, maybe. My friends, that's going to change. We're going to be heard now. We're making some changes in this society. It's a new day in the National Space Society. Uh, we have a new executive director. And we're very fortunate to have Mr. Brian Chase. He's uh, experienced on the Hill very much, having worked uh, for uh, Congressman Dave Wolf. And uh, he also knows his way around aerospace, having worked on the space lines. So that's very fortunate for us. We just had a legislative uh, conference last month where we had, this is our first one, we had 18 people that came up and participated. And we went around to 90 congressional offices. We were starting to make our voice heard. We're about to start a political action network where we can get in and release um, alerts, where we can make calls, send emails, write letters. Um, just want to combine the web, email, and our old phone tree concept, all wrapped into one to work more effectively together so we can be heard. And we've even got a local group in the Washington, D.C. area that, that plans to do a little sustaining effort to visit Congress throughout the year so that we can be heard. And it's about time. Also, we're going to start doing more in the area of projects. We now have a projects VP and a, a projects committee. And so things are going to start happening. We're going to be the, the society that does things. And uh, that's going to be a lot of fun. And so uh, I do ask all you guys to consider doing what you can to help that out and spread the word and get more people involved. Because, let's face it, we've got a big challenge to go from down here to where we want to live. So we got to push this as hard as we can. And with that, you know, I'd like to say that one way you can start pushing is with chapters. That's one way that each of you can get involved. And most of you here are, are or have been involved directly in chapters. And I see a lot of familiar faces out here, so I know this to be absolutely the truth. And I, you know, I've come up here for quite a few years and I said, hey, you know what? Chapters do things. There are things that chapters can get done. So I thought I'd show you an example of just what chapters can do. Just a little bit before I go into the, the chapters here. Of course, some of you have probably heard that uh, we must have a little program we call Halo. Oh, I'm getting seasick now. <laughs> I might fall off and break a leg again or something here. <laughs> yeah, I know I'm going to fall. Anybody got any spare crutches? All right, good. All right. Next slide, please. There you go. We know. You can start off with some little things in your backyard doing chapter events. Here, uh, Cal Powell was involved in doing some, uh, some of our smaller, earlier uh, hybrid rocket motor fires. The guy bent over, I'll show you a picture of him again later in the symbol of better. That's Tim Pickens. He was our chief propulsion engineer. Next slide, please. And of course, you knew that uh, we did some balloon flights. Uh, there you will see on, on your uh, right here is uh, our SO1 launch that made against both world records for the highest flight of an amateur rocket six years ago. It still holds that record. It's also the highest flight of a hybrid rocket, the only one ever actually lit at high altitude. The better picture is our uh, SL2 mission out in the Gulf of Mexico off of Barge. And we had a, the, the, the picture on the far left there was, uh, that was one of our UFO missions. We actually were doing a, a tank test to test uh, our ability to maintain our oxidizer temperature at altitude. And uh, that one landed in Dallas, Georgia. And some, like he was washing the dishes. <laughs> this thing comes down, it's got a loud beep on that orange package at the bottom, and, and this big silver, silver envelope goes down to Pepsi, catch behind her house, and she hollers and runs and calls the sheriff from local TV and says, 
There's a UFO thing in my backyard. Come get this thing. <laughs> and then her ground crew was chasing, shows up, knocking on her door, and then she knew the aliens had come. <laughs> anyway, next slide, please. Well, guess what? There can be spinoffs of this stuff. It can actually lead to some stuff. Real things. How about manned space programs, commercial manned space programs? Larry Stem Pickens, our chief propulsion engineer, he decided to do a cure of beauty as the chief propulsion engineer for Burt Root and on the, the Spaceship One project. So that's uh, Burt and Tim there together. Uh, the pod below them, which has a laser pointer, that's Spaceship One. And up above is the uh, aircraft known as the White Knight. Next slide, please. And there's Tim with uh, his, his motor he designed. That motor uh, is a nitrous hybrid rocket motor, a direct spin off of our old payload motors. Uh, he designed, you know, this, that team there, the skill, designed the case, the nozzle, throat, all that stuff. Uh, also the tank, you can see the oxidizer tank behind it. The big black thing that's kind of orange in the middle. Next slide, please. And, you know, we also at NATO did balloon launches. There's a local company in my school uh, called uh, Launch Systems Engineering. It's looking at something called Space Airways. They want to do a high-altitude, high-tech slingshot for the XPRIZE. So there's actually uh, two XPRIZE efforts spun off the NATO program. Or the process is uh, spinning off. So uh, it's interesting. And who's the other things? Next slide. We like to have fun. <laughs> Sunny drive in the neighborhood. This is this is uh, just the east of Huntsville in the hills, near an area called Gurley, if you've ever been in our neighborhood. And that's Glenn May riding uh, his rocket bike. <laughs> Glenn May went to work for Ruth and he's still out there. He's the only guy the that's still there with him. And uh, he's riding out there and showing the guys in California how to do rocket bikes. So they're, they're on the way here, guys. And well, you know, hey, it's good family fun. Next slide. That's the Barbie rocket bike. <laughs> Cut us the <with> pink basket. <laughs> That's Tim Pickens' daughter there. Oh, yeah, you can shut that off. <laughs> so. Thank you. 
presentations probably to at least a few thousand people over the years. I don't know what kind of impact I had on these people, but I do know this. The impact would have been zero if I hadn't had the opportunity to go out and make these presentations, and I owe the chapter system of the National Space Society uh, at, the, at the very least for that, because they ignited my passion. Um, and I may be a little bit political here. Uh, at the time, there were other space organizations around, but basically, they were magazine subscriptions and nothing more. Uh, the NSS was much more because of its chapters and because of the way it <laughs> welcomed its members' input, I think, with open arms. Um, well, today I'm going to talk about chapters and what they've been doing with the last year. Uh, I think it was Elizabeth Beer Browning who says, How do I love thee? Let me count the ways. Well, how do chapters promote space? Uh, I only have time to count the ways because they are frankly far too many. And what I did was I read through all the chapter reports and I just selected a cross section of activities. Not necessarily the biggest, uh, not necessarily the flashiest, but just to represent the breadth of ideas that chapters uh, come up with uh, in order to promote the vision of our society. Uh, perhaps the most novel of all of these activities uh, that uh, I saw was the William Bent Station which was basically a backyard camp out held over 15 weekends, uh, giving uh, the, the youth in the area uh, a chance to play space camp in a camp out setting. Uh, this activity uh, was done by the Heart of America chapter, uh, and it was done in conjunction with their local Mars Society chapter, and it was a good illustration of how we can all benefit by working together. Uh, another example of how cooperation benefits us all uh, happened in Chicago just last year uh, when NSS volunteers, myself included, uh, agreed to help the local Mars Society members staff the Mars Habitat, which was on display in the front of the world-renowned Adler Planetarium. I encourage you all to visit on your next trip to Chicago. So basically what neither of our organizations could do locally on our own, we were able to accomplish by joining forces and working together. Now in addition to their many programs and displays, uh, I really liked the, the idea of the Oasis chapter who decided to build a little Mars rover simulator and have it go running around the convention floor uh, at the Lost Pond convention. And this was in addition to their uh, exhibit and their programming. And I really liked also the part about giving away Mars bars as a part of their Take a Piece of Mars promotion. <laughs> Um, I like the Tucson Space Society's way of bringing their chapter members together and giving it more of a family feel to their activities by having potluck chapter member dinners. I thought that's a very nice thing to do. It's something that we in Chicago could probably learn something from. Uh, the Sheboygan Space Society created a special uh, exhibit that ran for a weekend for their communities Rockets for School program. Now, not only did they create an exhibit, they created the largest exhibit uh, at this exhibition. It attracted the attention of the Lieutenant Governor of the state of Wisconsin, who spent a fair amount of time discussing space policy with the chapter members. The Philadelphia Area Space Alliance. They had a special exhibit set up at the New Jersey State Museum. Uh, and this was done in conjunction with NASA's traveling ISS exhibit. The Queensland Space Frontier chapter, all the way from Australia, uh, as a part of their literacy project, they produced um, bookmarks that were basically promoting space. And according to the local library, these are a hot property for the schoolboys in the system. 
Uh, they've also uh, gone a step further and they've also uh, donated their chapter library to a local school and a special school as well uh, in the hopes of inspiring the next generation of astronauts. San Antonio chapter has been working with the Golan Elementary School uh, on the Young Astronauts program. I would encourage everyone here who is a parent with children in grade school to look into that. The Wichita chapter, I had second thoughts about including this one uh, in the list, and you'll see why in a minute. The Wichita chapter uh, judged and presented awards for student projects at the uh, Wichita State University's College of Engineering and National Institute for Aviation Research's Engineering Open House of <laughs> Please don't do this to me again. <laughs> uh, their chapter also supported and participated in the establishment of Ad Astra Kansas State um, with the governor reading a proclamation that was drafted by their chapter. So that's off to Wichita. Uh, the German Space Society was able to uh, get one of their uh, chapter logo cards carried up to the International Space Station by Station Commander uh, Salad. Uh, the Sacramento <laughs> 5 chapter is working on a prototype like the rocket engine and has also worked with JP Aerospace on balloon assisted rocket launches. And the president of that company is a member of their chapter and is here as well. So this is just my random sampling of a few of the different types of activities uh, that chapters were involved in last year. And 2002 was a hard year for all of us, uh, especially economically. And yet these chapters were able to call upon a core of dedicated volunteers uh, who spent their time, their money, and their efforts to go out and promote the vision of our society. So my hat is off to all of them. And now it's time to start presenting the awards. Uh, I'm going to begin uh, with the Special Merit Awards. Uh, these are given to those chapters whose programs or projects during 2002 uh, are to be considered outstanding. The uh, first award is going to be the Explorer Award. And uh, this award goes to a chapter that's working on an engineering project uh, that's furthering uh, the goals of our society. And the beauty of this particular project um, is that it combines cleanliness with education and a journey into space to boot. And the project I am referring to is the Washing Machine for Space Getaway Special Project uh, involving the students at the Hildebrandt Intermediate School. Uh, the project manager, Francis Govers, uh, wasn't able to be here. Uh, the chapter is the Clear Lakes Area, NSS. And I would like all the members uh, of that chapter to come forward, please. Chapter with the Special Merit Award for Publicity and Media. Uh, 
Uh, Donnie Lothar couldn't be here tonight, but I would like the other members of uh, yeah, you, you are here. Well, come on up. As well as all the other members of the chapter. Over 100 pages long. Uh, 
the hardest part, though, remains uh, in front of them, and that's cutting it back to 75 pages. <laughs> so I'm honored to present the Special Merit Award for Education to the NSS of North Texas Chapter. Lou Massa, the president, could not be here, but Carol Johnson is. And now for the Chapter of Excellence Awards. These are the highest awards uh, that the chapter can receive, receive and are given based on overall excellence and commitment to the NSS vision. The first of these awards is for public outreach. And I want you to bear with me here for a minute because now I'm going to go off on a little bit of a tangent. Um, so. Um, I've been active in computers for a very long time, um, and I want to take a few minutes to talk about the internet. Uh, today, the internet can be viewed you know, by chapters as being both a problem as well as an opportunity. Uh, I know I'm speaking at least from Chicago's experience. People no longer today have to come to a chapter meeting to find out what's going on in space. All they have to do is turn to a plethora of websites to get the latest news and pictures. They can go to the Usenet and always find somebody to argue with about what we should be doing in space. Uh, there's email. There's just a whole range of uh, alternatives for somebody uh, versus heading out to the local chapter meeting going on. But on the other hand, the internet presents us uh, with a rather unique opportunity to expand our base uh, for each chapter beyond the local community because the internet is worldwide. So as the world turns more and more to the internet to receive the information that it uses for making decisions, NSS chapters have to rise to the occasion and make sure that our message is heard in this new medium. Use of the internet uh, brings us the ability to do public outreach on, on a whole new level. Our audience is no longer limited to the people in our community. It can be anybody who's connected. So this year, I would like to present the Chapter of Excellence Public Outreach Award to that chapter that has made the best use of the internet for doing public outreach. Uh, in terms of the sheer volume of useful and persuasive information, uh, in terms of the number of other sites on the internet that link to this chapter's website, uh, I'm very happy to declare that this year's winner of the Public Outreach Award is the Lunar Reclamation Society of Milwaukee, Wisconsin.
there's a wealth of material from back issues, uh, as well as his writings, as well as a number of uh, ch resources for chapters available. Now it's time for the award for chapter excellence uh, in the area of service to the society. Uh, this year, the winner of this award is a chapter uh, without whose uh, assistance um, we probably wouldn't have successfully pulled off the numerous activities in which the NSS took part in the World Space Congress that was held in Houston uh, in October of last year. Uh, the components of this were uh, setting up the staffing uh, an exhibit booth for the NSS for the week in which the conference ran, um, working in setting up uh, the NSS Leadership Symposium uh, with key speaker being Representative Nick Lampson of Texas, the principal sponsor of the Space Exploration Act. Um, working with the fundraising dinner that was held that evening, it was chaired by Hugh Downs, and providing a uh, auction of rare space memorabilia for people like myself. Uh, I'm richer and poorer because of that. <laughs> So anyway, this year's Chapter Excellence in Service to the Society Award goes to the Clear Lakes Area Chapter of the National Space Society. Thank all of you for having done so much to promote space, 
uh, through your chapters during the year 2002. Thank you.
families of the crew of the Space Shuttle Columbia is Mr. Barry McCool, the father of Navy Commander William C. McCool, the pilot of Columbia. But just before I invite Mr. McCool up here to accept the award, just a couple of quick points about uh, Mr. McCool himself. He is, in fact, a retired US Navy pilot. He and his wife were really both professors at the University of Nevada in Las Vegas. But perhaps most poignantly, they are both National Space Society members, and they have been since the late 1980s. And perhaps of greatest significance of all is the fact that they have been and continue to be very strong advocates for the continuation of human space exploration. I'd like to invite Mr. Barry McCool to come up and accept the 2003 Space Pioneer Award on behalf of the families of the crew of the Space Shuttle Columbia.
Bilan and Rona, his wife, were sponsored by my son Willie and his wife, Ahalani, or Lani as she's known. And they guided them through the training program for not only the astronaut, but for the spouses and their children. And at this picnic, I had the opportunity to meet what would be the future crew of STS-107. And even then, it was quite obvious that these were special individuals. The time that I had with those individuals, I will cherish. I had the opportunity the night before the launch to attend the Beach House dinner for the crew and parents at the Cape. And it was during that time that I had astronauts, not only STS-107, but all the astronauts who were there, came up to me to talk to me about my son. And a recurrent theme was that they wanted to be on his crew on the next mission that Willie flew us to Miami. You can't ask for anything more. No one should have to go through and bury a son or a daughter ahead of their time as a parent. This has been a tough four months. And to give you an idea of what I've been doing in my family, I have a son that's a Black Hawk chopper pilot with the Tepcon Division in Fort Drum, New York. He went to the school, the high school in Syracuse, New York, and did a presentation and a thank you to the students that had the ant experiment that was on STS-107. My daughter spoke to Girl Scouts and to uh, civic organizations and schools in Orlando, Florida, and the Cape on the value of staying in school and continuing pushing the barriers and the frontiers of space beyond where they are now. And my wife and I have spoke to numerous schools, and I just found out I have another speaking engagement to a K through five grades uh, Tuesday afternoon. And the message that we're sending is that one, these astronauts gave their lives for all mankind that the experiments that were being conducted didn't just benefit the United States, but they benefited everyone, especially you ladies out there in the osteoporosis experiments that they were conducting to increase the knowledge base on something that's very near and dear to your hearts, the deterioration of bones. And the other message that we're say to the students that we have contact with is, don't let anybody tell you no. If you have the desire and the heart to exceed, you can have the opportunity to participate in space. Now, we all know that the astronaut program is a very small, close group, and that your odds very high becoming an astronaut, but you can contribute just like everybody in this audience is contributing to the furthering of the exploration and the habitat of space. And this is what we're talking to students about. Don't let somebody tell you you can't do it, but I can. And I feel very privileged and privileged to be here tonight to speak to you. And this award I know it means a lot to me, but it also will mean a lot to the rest of the Columbia crew and the families. And I thank you for it. Thank you.
to redouble our efforts as members of the space movement to accelerate the day when others can go into space and give great meaning to the events of February. I hand you back to Greg Allison to complete the series.
your job if you want to get there. Stay with us here. Work and do it. Let's all go. Thank you, everyone. Good night.